So, test bench log number four. Um, changed a few bits around now. Time to start sort of dialing this in so it's all a bit more accurate. You'll probably notice it's a lot quieter in here. The server is off. The uh, clock on the wall has gone. That was actually knocking up the dB meter by nearly two dB. Very noisy clock. Um, we've set up here just uh, the dB reader. So I'm going to be quiet and you'll just kind of get what the floor noise is. The machine is completely idle. The molecule was idle. So you will just see what the floor noise is in here. So somewhere about sort of 38 dB. The fans on the radiators are running um, about sort of 400 RPM, 500 RPM. So, and they're all not pure. So they're pretty much silent. Um, oh, actually, sorry, it's Arctic P12s on something else we'll show you in a minute. Um, and there's two Arctic P12s here. These are both running, um, again, around about sort of four or 500. They're not, they're not running off any fan curves at the moment, but they're not running at full speed. So between that and the, uh, the, the hardware VPN over in the corner and uh, the fiber modem, that's given us around about 38 dB. So that is not reflective on the, the molecule at all. That, that's just kind of the, that's just kind of what the room sits at. So we've done a few things here. Firstly, if we go around, um, you will see we now have two power supplies. So this, is, this would be what we would normally run. Um, we've taken out the eight pack two kilowatt and that's now to 1600 watt um, power supplies as would normally come they're daisy chained together um, and then the load has been split so the motherboard the PCIe um, expansion 12 volt um, you know the, 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 the SATA power that's all coming off one power supply with two GPUs and then the other four 3090s are on the second power supply so they're both pulling Let's have a quick look on idle. Uh, we've got 98 watts on one and 56 watts on the other. So on idle, you know, the, the, the system's pulling about 150-ish watts, which, you know, again, is, is incredibly low. Not that you'll have it on that for long if you have a system like this. So that's that part of it. Everything's still going into the EK manifold. Everything's on the quick release. We haven't changed anything there. Then over here, we've now changed things. So this was what we was using, Amora 420. Now the flow module that we're talking about, um, our new external cooling solution, isn't gonna have one 420. It's gonna have two 420s. Um, we haven't got two 420s here. Again, stock is just, it's just the biggest pain at the moment, but we have got, we've always got 360s in stock. So we've got a 360. This is coming from the outlet of the manifold. That is then daisy chained into the inlet of the 420 and into the pump, the, the reservoir, the pumps, and so the cycle of life begins again. So that's that's the setup. So the for those that don't know, the Mora 420 from Watercool is 2.5 kilowatts of heat dissipation, and the Mora 3 360 is 1.5 kilowatts of heat dissipation. So obviously our finished unit will have up to five kilowatts of heat dissipation, um, but in this we've got up to 4,000 watts. So we're well over what we need. But obviously, if we did have another two RTX 3090s that we will end up shipping the system with, um, then, you know, that, that, that five kilowatts, still over the top, but very good. Um, and if we do move to Threadripper Pros as well, we're not entirely sure on the heat consumption on those yet. So, you know, it's always good to have too much than not enough. That's, that's our motto. So... Over to the um, screen. 
We've done another thing now. Uh, a few people asked, can we just see the system running with no power draw limit? Hence why we did the swap out of the CPUs and we also wanted to get the, the, the sound more to what, to what one can expect. Um, so power limit is at 100%, so that's getting the full amount of sort of 350 to 370 watts per GPU. Um, idle's gone up a bit, so um, still pretty good. Um, better than it was when we first installed the manifold, and that might have just been due to maybe a bit of air left in the loop. Um, this has been kind of running for 24 hours now. So, um, yeah, idles, idles are looking good. This, is a, this machine is from a cold boot, by the way. So, um, so without further ado, let's get Octane Bench running. Uh, let's just have a quick look at the stats i mean you can see the jump up is significant compared to when we've got that power draw limit on um when that when that's on 70 75 percent to get up to 50c is taking you you know sort of five to ten minutes whereas instantly we jump up into those 50s um we've been running this for a couple of hours and then we stopped because i thought you know it would be good to have a machine from cold boot so you see exactly what is happening um, from, from, from initially turning the system on. We couldn't seem to pass about 62C, um, and that was after continual 100% load for pretty much about two, two and a half hours. So, as we said, if that was running in series, if we just had each GPU looping onto the next, um, it would be very interesting to see to see how that went. Um, so let's have a look at temps. Coolant temp. As we said, the calibration is off between these two. The top sand 26, the bottom sand 29. Um, we did some more testing, and I would say that the bottom one is about a degree, a degree and a half out. So that coolant temp is probably sitting somewhere around about 27 and a half, 28 at the moment. Um, again, our initial testings, we couldn't get the water temp past um, about 34 C. Somebody else asked what coolant we use. Um, we use the Ultra DP from Aqua Computer. Um, it's it's the best that we've used so far. I mean, in some machines, it's it's been in there for two years, so um, that's a really really good coolant, um, and it's not too expensive either. So let's get a dB reading. Um, as I said, you know, obviously, this is trying to kind of show what it would be like in a real life situation. Um, that's why we've got three meters of hose between the molecule CPU GPU module and the flow module that's not in any kind of uh, housing obviously um so there is six meters of travel there of the coolant which is then going between these two rads the two rads are blowing towards the camera at the moment um and they're pretty much nothing um there you go so we've got 300 rpm the fans are running on the 420 um oh i can't actually i have oh yes i can um and then on the 360 these fans are running at 365 rpm so that's pretty much silent we're running under 400 rpm across all of these fans let's get the db meter Remember, the floor noise of the room is somewhere around 36 to 38. I'll be quiet. Okay, so that's, we're talking about a couple of dB. And the machine is at 100% load. Let's have another look at the temps. Let's get closer. So this is kind of what we've been seeing, 63 there. Um, we'll go back to that again in a minute. Let's get this by the machine. I know the mach the actual molecule would have a few more fans going. Um, I'll be quiet. So 
So the molecule at the moment, I know, and it's open, remember, so none of the noise is kind of being um, uh, muffled at all by side panels and the lid, which, which would also lower it a bit. But we've got two fans here. Both of the 1600 watt power supplies are in eco mode. We've got this, uh, which somebody kindly pointed out, looks really pathetic. It's just the test bench. Uh, but this is actually a Dynatron OEM um, 3647 cooler, and it's, it's pretty good. I mean, that's got a, you know, there's a, I think it's a W3245 in there. Um, I know we're not stressing it at all, but it, it's, it's, it is very quiet. But that is a slightly more industrial fan, so that's a bit noisier. Um, and... And yeah, and that's it. So that's also adding a few dB. So again, when you're talking about silence in a system, is your room silent? Does the room have no noise? Unless you're in one of those uh, special chambers, every room's got some kind of noise and it's different from one to another. Just moving the clock off the wall in here changed the dB by, by, by a few points. So as far as I'm concerned, this would be classed as a, as a almost silent, inaudible system. Um, when you're talking about all of these radiator fans only doing about 400 RPM. And once again, we still haven't dialed this in more yet. We haven't got the Aqua Aero um, Pro um, controller installed yet, which is what we use from Aqua, Aqua Computer, which is just brilliant, it's amazing. Um, anybody that knows uses them and uh, that will be able to dial in stuff even more. So back over here to the temps, 63, 65, 66. Uh, forgot to say the ambient of the room is 20.9, so 21 degrees in here. Um, as I said, I know this is from a cold boot, so, but this is 100% power load. Let's have a quick look again at the power draw. So one, one, one one four three and six five three so about 1750 watts but that you know it's erratic it will jump up and down as it's using different gpus whilst rendering so again we've kind of topped out around about 2000 watts there so that's at 100 percent power load we can see the gpus are getting hotter we can see that the loop itself, though, can still run almost silently, um, which is great. Once we tune that, we, you know, we'll get some more. Um, we'll get some more of the fans reacting to this, and then we'll bring that down some. So, score three eight nine five. So for all of that extra wattage and the extra heat we kind of gain about 100 points. So, in my mind, using the power limit is a no-brainer. Um, we'll do another video in a minute and bore you some more with that power limit on using this dual Mora 3 loop. Um, and we'll see what, and, and obviously the, the load balancing with the power supplies, and we'll see what that gives us. So, uh, more food for thought.